So how's the peacemaking been going? We have for the last three weeks been looking at four practices of peacemaking. If maybe this is your first time tuning in ever or for your first time in a few weeks. This week we're looking at the fourth practice, but I, let's review them. To make peace, Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. To make peace, we ask anything, listen well, disagree freely, and today Pastor Jason is gonna look at love regardless. Friends, God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. And I love you too, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's worship God and we're gonna look at how we can love regardless.
Friends, welcome to our online only service. I'm so grateful that you have uh, decided to worship with us in this virtual space. Today, we are looking at the fourth practice of peacemaking, which is love regardless. Those four practices, again, to get them in our brains, ask anything, listen well, disagree freely, and love regardless. This is uh, the end of the month of June. Next week, we're gonna be going into a new series on the book of Romans and I invite you to join us in this virtual space or online. Also, I wanna say um, words of thanks to all the folks who've helped us pre-record worship music for this service over the last several years. We had our last official recording last week and some of that music you just worshiped too. We're gonna to be changing the format of this service this summer and then moving into the fall. There will still be a sermon and a prayer, um, but we are going to be phasing out the pre-recorded music there is a whole playlist of the music we've recorded over three years on YouTube. There's a link to it on the screen, and I encourage you to check that music out. Also join us in person, or you can live stream our Sunday morning services if you wanna worship with our band. We have a 9 a.m. live stream and a 10.30 traditional live stream here at the church. I encourage you to give to the ministry of this church. Go to HaddonfieldUMC.org. There is a Give button. And if you want to find ways to go deeper in your faith life here, go to HaddonfieldUMC.org slash now. Well, friends, as we continue to worship God and look at how we can love regardless, let's join our hearts and minds in prayer. Loving and gracious God, I give you thanks for this uh, congregation of people uh, gathered in a different way and yet scattered, but not too far from your connection. God, we thank you for a community of people who may be across the United States and even in other countries. We thank you for the gift of technology and how over the last several years, we've been able to stay connected even when we are apart. Continue to work in our church, in our lives, and through our efforts to follow Jesus where we are. Oh God, we pray for the hurting world. We pray for those who are caught in places of war, of poverty, of famine, of discrimination people who struggle with hurts in their personal lives and their families, illness, and even death. God, may your healing be real in our lives and may it begin in our hearts. And God, we pray this in the name of Jesus as we also pray that prayer he taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. This makes for a beautiful prayer. But have you read the comments lately? In a world of loud opinions, deep divides, and growing animosity, how can we ever be peacemakers in today's world? Come find out this June, the practices of peacemaking. Ask anything, listen well, disagree freely, and love regardless. Hello friends, thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Throughout June, we have explored together about what it means to be a peacemaker in the world and how to become one in our journey following Jesus. And for the last three weeks, Pastor Chris introduced one of the practices of peacemaking for us to move forward and make it a reality by practicing ask anything, listen well, and agree to disagree freely. And today we are here to learn about the fourth the practice, love regardless. By the way, these practices were developed and introduced by a youth group in the National Community Church in Washington, D.C. a couple of years ago. I'm convinced that this is contrived as we experience hundreds of churches disaffiliating the denomination today over homosexuality issues. And another denomination is dividing over women's pastoral leadership and the world is becoming more divisive and polarized on everything. So how can we work together to make peace in our reality, in our lives? Peace is the greatest and highest goal or hope that everyone wishes to achieve. But 
we as a human tend to approach peace through binary thinking, war versus peace. You either have it or you don't have it. This understanding of peace as an absence of violence or conflict, known as negative peace, provides only an incomplete picture for us. It implies that peace can be achieved only under certain conditions, once the gunfire forced silence, once the conflicts are resolved. However, shalom, meaning peace in Hebrew, is not limited to the absence of war or violence. Shalom means wholeness and harmony. It is not just a nice value to have, but a core identity of children of God, as Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Peacemaking requires active and intentional work in our journey as individuals, families, communities, faith community, communities, and society. Shalom includes peace with God, with each other, and with creation. So let's read today's text in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 38 through 48. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your clock as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. In this teaching, Jesus challenges his followers to do the opposite of what seems normal, reasonable, and fair in our human understanding. We hear Jesus' alternative ways of peacemaking. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, but I say to you twice. The first section, verse 38 through 42, mentions the commonly followed rule of retaliation to keep peace among citizens. And I liked how Pesachris differentiated peacemaking and peacekeeping. We are not called to keep peace, but to make peace. And peacekeeping is working to avoid or prevent conflict. Peacemaking is different from peace faking, which is walking away by pretending everything is okay when it is not. And this love of retaliation, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, allowed people to pay, to pay back to those who hurt them, but also protected the weak from the from the abuse of power by those in higher positions. You can pay back only as much as they harm you or hurt you, no more or no less. It protected the weak from losing their life over those trivial matters. Yet Jesus' radical alternative way to make peace is do not resist evildoers, but show mercy, kindness, generosity, and forgiveness in your reaction to conflict. And Jesus gives some examples. And the first is to turn the other cheek if anyone slaps you on the right cheek. So let's assume that you are right-handed and if you slap someone's face, not that I encourage you to do that at all, but the for better understanding of the text. What side of the face would have been slapped? Yes, the left. But Jesus specifically said, if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, and in order to do that, a person probably used their back of the hand, which was a far more offensive gesture for the Jews in ancient world. And our reasonable reaction and response 
would be slap back immediately if possible or fling from a dangerous, dangerous situation, as we have taught. However, Jesus says, turn the other cheek. And this unexpected reaction com might confuse and disorient the uh, existing orders, but creates a space for reorienting the new orders. The following examples are being overly generous in sharing our belongings, labor, or money. But a lot of questions and concerns have arisen about its interpretation in my simple mind. Does Jesus literally mean for us to give away everything we have? Where are the healthy boundaries for my well-being? If I give everything, how can I protect my, myself or my family? Where can I find a peace of my mind? I can think of tons of reasons why I, I cannot turn the other cheek, why I cannot give away my coat, or why I cannot lend all of my money to those who beg. But then I realize that all these concerns and questions, there is me at the center and my family at the center. There is no room for others or for God. And I'm reminded of the Proverbs Chapter 25, verses 21 through 23 in the Hebrew Bible connected with this Jesus teaching. If your enemies are hungry, give them bread to eat. If they are thirsty, give them water to drink. For you will heap coals of fire on their head, so the Lord will reward you. This proverb encourages us to show generosity towards our enemies. Generosity shames the enemy that hopefully our generosity encourages repentance on their side. Jesus also dismantles the boundaries between neighbors and enemies. As Jesus saw everyone as beloved children of God in one big family. Yes, the world is divisive. Yes, the world is polarized. Yes, the world forces us to pick sides and don't hesitate to label us in the blink of an eye. But peace is God's dream for God's children to live in harmony and wholeness as God created the world in the beginning and God never given up on us. And peace can be found when we agree to disagree freely and love regardless in our community. So how can we work together in our journey of peacemaking in our community? First, let's not give up on each other as God has never given up on us. God is love and God loves us first and love is God's very nature and driving force. And love flows through like waterfalls and there is nothing we can do to stop it. So let it flow through us. God made a new way for us to make peace with God and with each other through Jesus Christ. And God is faithful to make the sunrise in the morning on both to the evil and the good. And God has no partiality by sending rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. And that is really good news for us. And God's love makes healing possible regardless of how deep our pain is. And God's love makes peace possible regardless of how deep a hatred is. Shalom is possible because God has never given up on us. One of the theologians, Walter Brueggemann, said, Shalom is deeply rooted in a theology of hope in the powerful, buoyant conviction that the world can and will be transformed and renewed, that life can and will be changed, newness can and will come. Shalom is an announcement that God has a vision of how the world shall be, and it, it is not yet. Peacemaking is challenging, but it is possible if we choose to love regardless by showing acceptance, tolerance, embrace, patience, generosity, irresistible kindness, and radical forgiveness. It is possible to grow in love as God has loved us. Secondly, do not let anyone else define your path. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 states the attributes of love. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own ways. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. 
How quickly do we judge someone from instant reactions or first impressions? Even if you get off on the wrong foot, hold your judgment until you hear their stories of how they get there. Let us be quick to listen and slow to anger and slow to speak. Let us choose to love expecting nothing in return. Our job is not convince people to be on our side. We are not capable of changing people's minds or hearts because that's the work of the Holy Spirit. We might be uncomfortable with our differences, different opinions, different stance, but we acknowledge that diversity is also great blessings and opportunities for us to grow and expand through open and honest conversation with respect and love. Peacemaking is a continuous process beyond its consequences. Conflicts and division will never vanish, but how we work together to make peace is truly what matters. In fact, in today's text, Jesus only talks about how we should respond to the conflict instead of how to change others or how others should respond. Let's not try to fix others. Love is not insisting our own ways. Each of us is free to make our own decisions, own choices, and responsible for them. Thirdly, I want to emphasize what Pastor Chris shared previously. Prioritize relationships first over position, opinion, or everything else. Refuse to allow the world to turn people into enemies. Refuse to be murdered by the world's ability to turn people into enemies. We are all God's children, bearing God's image in us, and relationships are everything with God and with each other. We are not competitors or enemies, but siblings in Christ calling for a joint mission to follow Jesus Christ. Hurt people, hurt people. Kill people, heal people. Love people, love people. I hope and pray for you that we may experience God's love and healing first in unexpected places and ways on the journey toward peacemaking. It is overwhelming and seemingly impossible. However, it is possible in God and with God. So let us not give up on each other and choose relationships first to create a safe space to ask anything, listen well, agree to disagree freely and love regardless and see and experience how God works in and among us for the transformation of our life, community, society, and the world. Thanks for joining our journey toward peacemaking. It is hard and it is challenging. However, the good news is we are not alone to do that by ourselves. We have God and we have each other to walk this journey together. So go and stay in the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ and peace of the Holy Spirit and be the peacemaker this day and the days to come. Amen. Sing like